It's like I just want to catch it like a beer Pokemon. I just want to catch it and bring it back into the glass. <laughs> Considering the price point and considering the fact that it's so readily available. It's really, really good without being unforgettable. Oh, Sandra, we're finally doing this. This is a lost review. We filmed this review two years ago and it was lost. It was lost in the ethers, the beer ethers, never to be seen again. But now we're doing it once more. We had to. We cannot have a beer channel without doing a review of this beautiful, delicious beer. The secret beer, as we'll secret. get into in a moment. <laughs> this very well-kept secret in the beer world, Modelo Negra. about the Modelo Brewery and you want a background on that, we have an amazing review on Modelo Especial that we did a little while back that you can go check out to get all the history you need on Modelo. For now, we don't need to get into that. But all we need to know, my friend, is that this is in the style of a Munich Dunkel. Absolutely correct, my friend. Absolutely correct. And the reason why Munich Dunkels used so Mexico brewing Munich Dunkels, how did that happen? Again, go back and check out that Modelo Especial video because there was a whole influx of people from Austria specifically who settled in Mexico way, way back when in beer history. And a lot of that beer style had transitioned over. And of course, they were like, well, we need beer and we need good beer. And so they started bringing these styles over and one of them being the Munich Dunkel. And this, my friend, I think you have a very good, very good sort of analogy about how this is a secret beer. I do, I do, my friend. Back in Europe, I had a chance to try their regular especial. Uh, you know, it's a little bit more rare, rare to yeah. find compared to here, especially in Florida. <laughs> but uh, the dunkel, uh, sorry, the, the I called it a dunkel, but the, the yeah, negra. <laughs> basically, it is a dunkel. <laughs> so you're not wrong. The yeah, the negra was uh, I had never seen that beer before. And, yeah. you know, when I first started working at Total Wine, like, you know, I had a, a bunch of people that would come in and ask for the Modelo. And I would, you know, some, some yeah. sometimes I would ask, oh, yeah, it's just down there. But do you, and, and a lot of them would, you know, not a lot, but a few of them would, would ask, well, wait a moment, you know, kind of like, yeah. wait a second, do you have the Negra? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And you're like, what do you know that I don't know? Yeah. What and it's like, beer? you know, for me, it was just like another, you know, another one that is there. I said, sure, they, they have the Negra. I just had never tried yeah. it. Right. But then yeah. I started paying attention to that. And all those people would, uh, there's like fewer percentages. And I'll go, wait a moment, do you have the negra? Oh. You started adding up your beer statistics. Exactly, exactly. They were just going like, what is this thing? So I ended up having to try it, of course. <laughs> and I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I thought like, that's why people, like there's the, the few that actually discover it, like almost like you're keeping it as a secret and they go hunt for it. And it's a little difficult to find. You were also telling me before the review that actually up uh, where you are, it wasn't that easy to find it, right? It's really hard to find here. This is like a, a white whale of beer because like I, growing up in Quebec, I'd never seen this. I know visiting you down in Florida, even I, I've been to California multiple times in my life and I have some family down there and it's readily available everywhere. Any grocery store, even CVS's in California will carry Modelo Negra. But here... I've ne I'd never seen it before. I didn't know this existed. I just know Modelo as being the Especial. That's pretty much it. Uh, but then when you told me about it, I started looking for it, and I found one one single beer store here in Ontario, in Hamilton, where I'm living, that carried it. So there's only one store out of dozens and dozens and dozens in this particular city that decides to carry it. So it's very elusive, my friend, considering how popular Modelo Especial is. The Negra flies under the radar. And you know what? I would go, I would be as bold as to say, as it's kind of like the beer drinker's beer, you know, kind of like the people who are in the know, the people who appreciate beer, even if they might not be a fan of Mexican beers in general, like that just sort of light lager Pilsner style, they, I think, will gravitate towards the Negra. So we got to get right into this, my friend. There's no time to mess around. This is a special beer and it deserves a special beer brackets review. So I think we should crack these open and get right into this review. What do you think? Let's do it, my friend. It's time finally back with the Modelo Negra. It's time. Oh, my God. I can't believe we lost this review. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there were reasons, my friend. There were reasons for that. You know what? Yes, we've talked about this before. The beer gods work in mysterious ways. <laughs> and if they decided to delete that off my memory card, there was a reason. There was. I think this episode is going to be extra special because of that. 
I have no doubt, my friend. Let's go. Yeah. Here it is. I saw that they have this in cans, too. Can you get those down where you are? I cannot. Really? It's so crazy how many times you can get like beers in cans that I have never seen in cans before. That's awesome. I can only get them in the... Bo- I, I only have the bottles here, but I've just, I saw on their website that they have these black cans okay. that looked really cool. That's uh, yeah no I've never seen them here at least like not the stores here around but uh, I'll I'll start mm. hunting my friend I'll start hunting. <laughs> well aroma cheers buddy. Let me aroma know cheers to you my friend. Mm. Oh. oh this is such a good beer. This oh I love such a good beer. So inviting already yeah. in the glass like you want to take a sip, um, but it has these beautiful caramel notes a little bit of multi rich rich kind of like almost like a bread. Uh, bread crust i just want to take a sip good ciabatta you know the crust of a ciabatta yes i'd say a a little bit of there's clearly like hop presence uh not as Mm -hmm. strong it's more malt forward there is also a little bit of a sweet presence uh not not overly sweet just like a just a hint um very 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 nice do you think that's from the uh, caramel malts that they use it's possible it's possible i mean in any kind of dunkel beer or darker beers tend tend to have yeah. a little bit more of that like sweet presence compared to obviously pilsner like beers that are putting like more of an emphasis on the hops so as far as score score goes my friend i think i'm going to start with the two here because mm-hmm. i really like the way that things are balanced uh, for uh, the price and for how affordable and also like readily available is and 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 knowing like yeah. how good the the For regular you. modello is this one here brings it up like a notch and adds all those complexity without feeling uh you know overbearing you said like toasted bread you mentioned the ciabatta i think just like toasted fresh bread you know i slather some butter on there and a nice sunday morning a little sunday morning toasted bread beer I think that's the aroma that I'm getting from there. And also, I, you know, I'm reading before they use those caramel malts. It's very strong, like sweetness, very nice maltiness on there. It's just like smelling a fresh, like a bakery. You walk into a bakery in the morning when they have all the pastries just sitting on the mm. shelf. Some fresh pies sitting on the shelf, you know, and the breads and just taking those aromas. That's what it's like smelling this beer. It's delicious. I would say the only knock on it is that I wish the aroma was a little bit stronger. When I, when I get like a little whiff of it, it's like, oh, the aroma's there. It's gone. It's like, I just want to catch it like a beer Pokemon. I just want to catch it and bring it back into the glass. <laughs> so I'm going to go with a 2.5 because it's close to being a 3 for me. But I just I just wish it was a little, I wish it was more. I wish it was a little stronger. More of a good thing. But cheers, buddy. I'm just, I'm cheers, just literally friend. salivating right now smelling this beer. <laughs> I just want to go in for a sip. Cheers, cheers. to you. Enjoy. Hmm. Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Man, I, I so, got to say, like, they really know how to make beers there at the Cerveceria Modelo. <laughs> the taste, like, has all those elements that we described in the aroma. You know, it's easy to, to, to sense, like, you know, that overly malty presence and, and, and then yeah. go overboard on the taste and become overly sweet. For sure. They yeah. are not doing that. They have that nice hop kick that just starts right from the beginning, carries exactly. over. Exactly. Brings out those nice like bitter note, but also aromatic, like more, a little bit more herbal. Uh, so it's like going with the bread analogy. It's like if you had like some rosemary or or thyme, like something mm. something like that, like in the in the mix. All this bread talk. Yeah, and it's making me want some bread, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then you have like this richness, and also like some of those savory notes coming from the the toasted character of the bread, or, or in this case, obviously the malt. Uh, my friend, I'm going to go with 2.5. I think it's Whoa. it's very, very it's close there. to be per- perfect. I think, like yeah. you said, there's just something missing. It's almost like it's almost a little bit too soft. But I guess like that's also one yeah. of the appealing factors of this beer, that it's of course very drinkable. What do you think? I would love to know. Of course, it's based off of Munich Dunkel. And a lot of the other Munich Dunkels we've had, if you think of like the Erdinger Dunkel, that style is very light as well, right? Yeah. So I think this might, based on the Dunkles I've tried all being kind of light in that sense, I think maybe this is true to the style, but at the same time, you know, it's a, it's a Mexican cerveza, right? I mean, it's meant to be easy drinking. It's meant to be drank down in hot weather. It's not meant to sort of like bog you down with a really heavy flavor. Um, so I think this is all by design, but 
the thing with this beer is always consistent with me every time I have it. So I just want more. I want more of everything. I yeah. want more of an aroma. I want more of a taste. You get everything that you do off the aroma on the taste with a little bit more hoppiness, which I like. You get them a little bit on the aroma, but it's like a nice sort of bitterness that hits you on the taste. And I love a good beer surprise, something you don't expect. Uh, but I just wish it was stronger, man. I wish it was stronger. I'm actually going to go with like a two, I think, on the taste. Because what's there is great. But every time I take a sip, I'm like, that's good. But oh, it's like a it's like a beer ghost. It's just like it, it just flies by you and you see it. And you you know you get goosebumps and your hair stand up and you're just like oh that was great I got a little beer shock but it's like it's just gone it's gone right away the best the highest possible two I could possibly give That's now awesome. my friend the mouthfeel beer bracket tradition we have to do a little bit of a refresher here I hope you saved a little bit in your oh, uh, yes little I did stubby my bottle. friend I did I did let's do it I wish there was some yeast in there that we could <laughs> right swirl around and I wonder if they have um, a bottle fermented modelo somewhere like could, in the, in the cellars imagine, there imagine if this beer was bottle conditioned and it had like this really sharp sort of like erdinger like carbonation to it mm. that'd be nice that's true man this is good it's i don't know like I, every time i i drink this beer i'm always like a little you know not 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 shocked but like i'm surprised of how well all the things, all the flavors, all the elements are in place. And it's extremely drinkable. And I think the mouthfeel is yeah. a big part of it, for me at least. Mm -hmm. Carbonation is very lively. I mean, I'm sure on tap is even uh, probably more for what I remember. Oh my God, um, this on tap. Carbonation is nice and light, extremely drinkable. Again, like if I had to, I'd say like a, I'd like a little bit more carbonation. So I think I'm going to stick yeah. with the... 2.5 my friend 2.5 i really okay. i'm really liking this it's just that carbonation just a little bit more like as you can see like i poured it it, it uh, you know it kind of like yeah. settled like pretty quickly it's perfect for what it needs to be it's almost a very similar mouthfeel to the especial in that sense where it's like a very sort of light the modelo beers i find are a little bit sort of oily and mm. sticky a little bit sort of like a trademark of the modelo beers for me not not so much that it's unpleasant, but just like it, it coats your mouth a little bit when you drink a Modelo beer, as opposed to like a Corona, let's say, or, you know, Pacifico, another one, another cerveza you can think of. I would love it if this was a little sharper in the carbonation, but I guess that's just not its style. If you want something that's a little bit sharper, there are other Dunkles, like the, like the Erdinger bottle condition Dunkel that is very, very highly carbonated and sharp. So, you know, to each beer its own, that's not what this is. I think a 2.5 is good too. It's great. It does what it needs to. It it sort of cuts the sweetness, like you were saying, a little bit and makes it really sessionable, really crushable, which is a word that we've been using a lot lately that I love. Now for finish, what do you think? So see, as always, the finish is where all the magic happens. I, I think on this beer is particularly true because strong malt presence, um, which which I think is important because it, it, it kind of like unifies the whole experience. Uh, so it's still there in the finish. Yeah. That bitterness that to me on the finish, it showcases more like that burnt edges of the of the bread right like like a, a overly burnt mm. uh, toast like we've used before as a descriptor that kind of bitterness yeah. that comes from that another thing that i would like to add because you know it's relevant specifically with the finish i think this is also why one of the reasons why i love to pair this beer with food it goes so well with food because it has all those nice components that really you know are elevated once you eat something with it especially if it's something like salty yeah it just like you know like your classic chips and salsa like that something like that like it just pairs so well with this beer and i think the yeah. finish is a classic example of that it's not overpowering so it's not gonna take over anything else like but it's just refreshing enough to just make it extremely mm. crushable so yeah my friend 2.5 i think it's it's where i'm landing like it's missing something to be perfect just a little surprise like you said like a beer surprise but uh, apart from mm. that it's a beer surprise yeah, it's like, you know, burnt bread, like the bitterness of that, like the bitterness of like a charcoal burn kind of, that's what you get. And the hops that come out to play on the finish too. <laughs> the finish is delicious. It packs so much flavor into like this quick finish that's gone um, within two, three seconds. It's really refreshing, makes it really drinkable. Like you said, this would pair well with so many foods. Maybe that's one of the reasons why it's really popular with people. I think this is a good sort of beer to have with your dinner. If you're going to be having some barbecue, anything that you might be eating at home, maybe we need to bring back our beer pairings, our beer and food pairing episode series, my friend, and we need to start drinking some Modelo, Modelo Negra, Negra and tacos, tacos, something like that. Mm. Yeah. 
like any kind of like a grilled chicken or beef like this would go perfectly with that I'd say 2.5 is, is right up there, man. It's kind of flawless, but the only thing to bump it up to a perfect, you know, we need just a little bit of an X factor, something that it doesn't have, something a little bit unique, something yeah. that just like makes it unforgettable. It's really, really good without being unforgettable. Now we get to the overall beer experience, my friend, from beginning to end, from Modelo Negro. What do you think? Oh, man, like uh, this is a tough one because this this is what, a beer that really has... And, and I'm going to say shock this time has shocked me because I was not the first time I tried it. And every time I've tried it since, like it's a beer that I'm never expecting to be this good for yeah. uh, considering the the price point and considering the fact that it's so readily available. And like what we're doing right now, like, you know, sitting down and, and breaking it apart is even more testament to that. So actually, my friend, I think on the uh, on the overall, I'm going to go with a three because... It might not quite be there with some of the elements, you know, when you're breaking them apart. But as an overall beer experience, like this deserves this three because it's just so tasty and, you know, it just makes me want to go back yeah. into the glass. What do you think? But I could not agree more. A sessionable <laughs> dunkel like this, this beer is so unique and you wouldn't think so. You know, it's a Modelo beer. You're probably wondering like how unique could it possibly be? But this is why it's such a well-kept beer secret. It just, it takes this Munich Dunkel style and it turns into something that you can drink on a hot day on the beach and that you could pair with any kind of food. It's just, it's a multi-purpose beer. It's like a Swiss army knife of beer. It can just serve so many different purposes. And so for that, my friend, just from the beginning, cracking it open, getting the aromas out of the bottle or the can, however you're enjoying it, to that first sip and that deliciousness of being, oh, this is lighter than I thought it would be, all the way through to how that carries through to the finish. It is a three-on-three -three experience for myself as well, buddy. This beer is fantastic. So final scores, this doesn't happen too often. Normally there's a bit of a differentiation there, but Alessandro and I have the exact same score from Modelo Negra, and that is a 4.16 on five, which in our rating system is an excellent beer. This is in that top tier category, excellent beer for beer brackets, and it deserves it. It really deserves Same score, fun fact, same score as uh, Erdinger Weiss beer. You gave it the same score, my friend, 4.16. Everybody, let us know down below. What do you think of the Modelo Negra? Can you get it where you are? Have you tried it? Is it a beer secret for you? Have you never even heard of it before? Where you live, is this readily accessible? We'd love to hear from you. And don't forget, if you do want to join us again in the pub, if you want to have a beer along with Alessandro and I and you don't want to miss it, just click that little beer bell down below because YouTube bell. will let you know every time we're in the pub. <laughs> I'll give you a little call on YouTube and say, hey, they're in the pub. Come join them. Crack a beer. Go join Joe and Alessandro. And no matter what, don't forget... To close your beer brackets. <laughs> to close your set of a sub beer brackets. Open with an especial. <laughs> close with a dunkel. A little bit of foreshadowing for what's coming up next. Cheers, everybody. Right. Cheers.